If you try to melt dry ice, you're going to be pretty disappointed. For example, if I take this chunk of dry ice and blow heat on it, it kind of just disappears. Even though dry ice is really cold, you can easily hold a small piece of it in your hand without it hurting as long as you keep it moving in your hands. When you do this, you'll notice where it gets its name. It's very dry, not a hint of liquid. So why is dry ice so dry? And is it possible to melt it? Well, dry ice is the solid form of carbon dioxide or CO2. That's the same stuff that comes out of your car's exhaust or that you breathe out and the same stuff that carbonates your soda. But if dry ice is just CO2, then why is there always this white smoke around it? If you drop it in some water, you can get some really cool fog effects for Halloween. So the fog just pours out of the water here. But last I checked my own breath, you can't see CO2. So why can I see this CO2? Well, this white fog is actually the water coming from the air condensing to form tiny little droplets. So the fog isn't CO2, it's water. You can confirm that the gas that comes off dry ice is colorless when you put the dry ice in mineral oil instead of water. So there's no smoke whatsoever. You can see it's just this clear gas. You can see that the gas bubbles rapidly coming off of it are completely clear. What's really cool about this experiment with the mineral oil is because there's always a thin layer of gas around the mineral oil that's clear completely, you can actually get total internal reflection in the mineral oil. So it looks like a nice mirror on the surface of the dry ice. So dry ice is frozen CO2, just like regular ice is frozen water. If you look at a phase diagram for water and dry ice, you'll see that with both of them, if we start off in the frozen state, meaning solid at atmospheric pressure, and then I heat them up, for the water, we'll cross this line, which means that the solid will turn to a liquid. But then as I continue to heat it up, it'll turn into a gas. But if we look at the CO2 phase diagram, we'll see that when you start with the solid CO2 at atmospheric pressure and then heat it up, it doesn't ever cross into the liquid area. It's too low on the diagram, meaning the pressure's too low. So that means if we just raise the pressure, then it will act like normal ice and melt into a liquid and then evaporate. So in order to raise the pressure on the CO2, I'm going to stick some chunks of dry ice in this vial and then stick the vial in my vise. So as the CO2 turns into a gas, it'll raise the pressure in the vial all by itself. And before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Foreo. I want to tell you about one of their latest products called the Luna 4. The Luna 4 is the perfect gift for yourself or your significant other. You wouldn't clean up around the house with your hands, so why are you still cleaning your face with your hands? The Luna 4 has plush, ultra-hygienic soft silicone on the surface that can clean off dirt and makeup and open up the pores on your skin. It also even gives you a gentle skin massage as you use it called T-Sonic Pulsations. These pulses relax facial and neck muscle tension points and improve blood flow. They also help to temporarily dilate pores so that the active ingredients in your skincare can actually penetrate through the outer layer of skin without clogging the pores. It comes with a really cool app where you can adjust settings however you choose. It's clinically proven to remove 99% of dirt, oil, and makeup residue, and it's 35 times more hygienic than brushes with nylon bristles. These products rarely go on sale, but right now you can get a 21% discount for the first 100 people that click the link in my description. And thanks to Foreo for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. Now let's put it in the vise real quick. Right when the pressure hits about five atmospheres, then the dry ice will begin to melt into a liquid. Okay, in order to see what's going on, I'm gonna be blowing dry air on this vial. This will keep the condensation from forming on the vial and blocking what we're trying to see. Let me remind you that this is really dangerous. Don't try this at home. I'm wearing full protective gear in a controlled environment to do this. So you can see that as the pressure rises, the dry ice just melts into a liquid. That's so cool. It just resembles normal ice melting at this point. And we're left with a vial of liquid CO2.
But now if I release the pressure, the liquid will quickly freeze again because when you release a pressurized gas, it gets colder. So the liquid quickly turns to a solid again because it gets colder when I release the pressure. But then if I pressurize it again by tightening the vise, it'll melt into a liquid again. Now here's the danger. Once the dry ice is melted, this vial won't just stop pressurizing to five atmospheres. If I let it keep pressurizing and it had the strength, it would go well beyond that. It would get up to around 60 atmospheres. Now this vial can't contain that pressure, so it'll inevitably explode. Whoa. That's why you should never put dry ice in a closed container. It's so cool to see dry ice just melt like regular ice. It reminds you that it goes through the same phase changes like water, but we just happen to be at too low of a pressure to see the liquid form. In fact, we can make regular water ice act like dry ice if we just drop the pressure low enough. So if I put the regular water ice in my vacuum chamber and then heat up the ice, then it won't melt, but it just disappears slowly over time and turns directly into a vapor. It skips the liquid phase. When something skips the liquid phase, it's called sublimation. So dry ice sublimates at regular atmospheric pressure and water will sublimate in a vacuum chamber. But if you've ever looked in your freezer at ice cubes that have been there for a while, they seem shrunken as well. That's because they're actually sublimating in your freezer. But how's the ice sublimating if we aren't at low pressure? Well, this phase diagram that I showed you is for pure water. But in a freezer, it isn't just pure water. It's frozen water with air around it. So now you have a mixture of solid water and gaseous air. And if the air isn't saturated with water vapor in it, then it's not at equilibrium. So the water will evaporate into the gas directly from a solid. So water doesn't need to turn into a liquid, even at atmospheric pressure, as long as the temperature stays below freezing. But this is only because there's air around the ice. If you had ice with no air, it wouldn't sublimate unless it were in a vacuum. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.